If you're often overwhelmed looking at complex formulas, I want to show you a trick called Lambda, which allows you to go from lengthy formulas like this to something more user-friendly like this. So let's get into it. First up, at the basic level, we have a simple Lambda, so you can see what it does. Over here, we have all of these months and the sales figures for them, and we just wanna calculate the growth rate so Excel doesn't have a built-in growth rate formula, but we can actually just calculate it manually. We need to put parentheses and it's going to be the end value, so the February, minus the beginning value, so the January. And then we want to divide that by the start value again, so the value of January. Hit enter there and we get a growth rate of minus 0.33% and then I can just drag this down. There's nothing wrong with doing the calculation this way, but you might forget a few things. For example, here, you might forget to close the parentheses, or you might forget that you need to divide at the end. So instead, what you can do is use Lambda. And for this, all we need to go is head over to formulas. And here, we're gonna go to what's known as the name manager. Essentially, we're gonna create a custom function that does this calculation for us. So we can go to new here, and the name can be just the growth percent. Let's call it that. And here in the comments, you can add what it's gonna do. We don't need that for now, but under refers to here, we're gonna put equals lambda. And inside we really have two variables. One is the end value and the other one is the start value. So those are the two parameters we'll add in here, comma. And then we need to do the calculation for them. So in parentheses, that's the end minus the beginning. So minus the start, that's how we labeled it, divided by the start. Here we have it, and that's all we really need. We can close up parentheses and hit OK. Now click on close, and I can just use that function that we just created. So we called it the growth percent. That's the function, hit the tab key. We have two inputs. We specified we wanted the end value, comma, and we wanted the start value. We'll close the parentheses and hit enter. You can see we have the exact same data except that now we don't have the risk of forgetting to put the parentheses or having to add the division in there. It's just much simpler. And if you want to follow along, you can download this Excel file in the video description for free. And at this point, you might start to realize this is quite powerful, but it was a very basic example. So let's go over an intermediate one next. Here, we're going to try to add a function inside of the Lambda. So let's suppose we have these students and their scores, and we wanna know what grade to give each of them. Typically, you'll have to use an ifs statement for something like this, where let's say that if the score is greater than or equals to 80, comma, then let's call this something like in quotations honors, comma, then if that score is greater than or equals to 50 next, that should be just a pass in quotations. And finally, if that C3 is less than 50, then that's just gonna be equals to a fail. Let's suppose we have these three categories. We can just hit enter there and double click to drag that down. You can see that this formula is starting to get a bit longer than the previous example. So it's a bit tedious to have to write this out every time and you could have errors like forgetting to put the quotations every now and then or missing the equal sign for instance. So what we can do instead is just copy this whole formula by pressing control C. We can go to the name manager again the shortcut for it is just Control and F3. You can see it's opened up. We have the previous function we created, but we want a new one now. And let's go ahead and call this the score underscore calculator, something like that. And for the refers to area, this is where we'll paste the ifs function we just created. But first we wanna put a lambda around it and we need to add all the variables, which is really just one. It's only the score. So we'll add that in here, comma, and then paste the ifs that we just created. We wanna get rid of that extra equal sign though. And under all of these C3s in here, that's basically the score that we want. So we can replace that with score. Same thing over here, we want to replace with score. And one final time down over here. Once we've done all three, we just wanna close the parentheses. So it's closed once for the ifs and another time for the lambda. Click on okay here and close out of that. So now on the side here, I can use the score calculator that we just created. And all I need is to select the score and hit enter. I should get the exact same answers as over here, except that it's so much easier to read. We just have this one variable to add. 
Something like this is also really useful if you're passing the file to someone who doesn't understand Excel that well. Instead of overwhelming them and trying to teach them the ifs function like this with all the variables, you can just tell them to add the score calculator function and only add one variable. Once we have all these answers, the next step would be to visualize them. And an excellent way to do that is with chart templates like the ones HubSpot is kindly providing us. By clicking the link in the description below, you can access a variety of Excel graph templates completely for free. The download includes an Excel file with instructions on how to use the templates, along with a range of chart types to visualize your data. You can easily modify the data within these templates and the charts will automatically update. These templates can either accommodate a single column of data or multiple depending on your needs. I personally find these templates most useful for determining which chart type suits my data best as it's quite rare to have a template that shows all the chart types together at once. So I recommend visiting the link in the description below to download these completely free chart templates from HubSpot to level up your Excel game. And thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Moving on to the advanced level before we get into the expert level after. So over here, you can see that we have this table where we would like to filter things by the Americas region. And we also want it in order based on revenue. So highest revenue should go first and it goes down from there. For this, the first function we're going to use is the filter function where the array is basically the entire area. Let's include the headers as well, comma, and we want to include the region column. So this column over here, when it's equals to, in quotations here, the Americas. So it's going to filter only for the regions that are the Americas, close up parenthesis and hit enter. That's one part done, but right now this isn't in order. So we're going to have to create a sort in here as well. At the very beginning, we're going to type sort, hit the tab key there. We're fine with the array being this whole filter function we entered. So we'll go at the end, put a comma, and the sort index is basically what column do we want to sort by. It's the fourth column, the revenue based off of this whole array here. So we'll put a four comma and in what order. We want it in descending order, so minus one. Close up parenthesis and hit enter. Now we've got it well ordered that it goes from 18 all the way to 11, only for the Americas. As you've seen here, this isn't that simple of a function as it's combining the sort and the filter. We've also got this four and the minus one at the end. So it can be quite hard for someone to come in and understand this. That's why let's try to convert it into the lambda function. We're just going to copy this whole area except the equal sign at the end. Control C there and down below we're just going to try to create the lambda instead and see how it compares. We can go to formulas and to the name manager again. Let's go ahead and create a new function. We'll call this something like region underscore filter. You can add comments if you like. I'm just going to skip over that for now. And this should be equals to the lambda function and open up the parenthesis and what are the parameters or the variables we're adding here well we need to add one for the whole table so let's just call that all comma we need to add a second one for this particular column so the region column let's go ahead and call that the filter underscore column comma and then we can paste all our functions that we just created so control v here and the main thing we need to change is this b2 to e18 area this is now going to be called all, right? We named it over here at the start. That's the all part. And then the second part with the C's over here, this is going to be now the filter underscore column. Make sure you don't have any typos there. And that should be equals to Americas. Everything else is fine as is. We just want to close the final parenthesis and click on OK there. Now close out of this. So let's give it a try down below. We've called it the region filter hit the tab key there and as the all we want the entire table comma and what column do we filter by the region column over here that's all we need we can close a parenthesis and you can see we get the exact same data as above and by the way if you ever want to change the function or some of the variables that's super easy to do too we just need to go back to the name manager select the relevant one so region filter click on edit there and we can either change the name up top or we can also change this bottom part. So instead of all, let's suppose I call this my array. I also need to change it over here to array and click on okay. 
close out of that and now if I were to try it again so region filter you can see it's updated to the array but really it's gonna be the exact same thing it's all gonna work correctly as well as you can see here at this point you might be thinking this is all great but it's not very dynamic after all as the region we only have the Americas it's not like we can change it in here very easily because we don't have that extra variable also you might have noticed down below that Smith is duplicated which isn't great so let's see how we can change all of that on this fourth and most advanced part we will basically make a mini search bar for this you can see we have the same table on the left but the idea is that in here I can type Americas or whichever region I want like APAC and all of the data is going to update down below so what I need to do is go back inside of the name manager and edit the function we already created called the region filter we're gonna click on edit in here and the first thing we need is we need an extra variable so other than the filter column we need a filter underscore value comma and that value is gonna be this h2 right here so down over here instead of putting filter column equals americas that makes it not dynamic so we want to change that and instead put the filter underscore value in here click on ok and now we can try this function from scratch on this part so equals to region filter the array is the entire area nothing changes there comma same thing with the filter column all okay till now but we have a filter value at the end which is APAC close up parenthesis and hit enter and so now it's a dynamic formula so I can put Americas and you see how everything updates that said there's two key flaws like we mentioned this data is duplicated so we want to get rid of that duplicate and also here in the search bar if I change that to let's say Africa which is not part of these regions you can see that we just get an error so it would be nice to see some kind of message instead we can change these two quite easily by going back to the name manager and under the region filter we're just gonna click on edit right before the sort the first edit is we want to create the unique function so we're gonna put unique in here open the parenthesis and just close it at the end it's really that simple so now we should get rid of all of the duplicates Let's go ahead and try that. Americas, you can see that even though in this table Smith is seen twice, over here we only have it once because we've added the unique function. Now we need to work on the error message. If I put something strange in here, you can see that we just get an error as if the formula wasn't working correctly, but that's not the case. It's just saying that it doesn't match. So let's add a message like that. We're gonna go back into the region filter and edit. And here in the beginning part we're just gonna add an if error so if error open the parenthesis and at the very end let me stretch this out a bit more so you can see it better i'm just gonna delete that last parenthesis and instead put a comma and here we can say something like there is no matching value close those quotations add a parenthesis and another one for closing it all click on ok here click on close and so now you can see here that when I have HH it says there's no matching value or any other part that there is no search for but if we change this back to Americas you can see that it's all matching correctly it's really that simple to use lambda either to create your own custom functions or to simplify some existing functions but so far over here you might have noticed that when I just type AME you'll see that there's no actual search that's dynamic so right now if I hit enter there is no matching values it would be nice though to still be able to see all of the Americas we have a similar issue with other columns so if I look up Allen over here it tells me there's no match but ideally I want to look by more than just the region so it's a more realistic search bar you can learn how to do all of that with this other video over here where we create a search bar from scratch or you can learn more about Excel taking our Excel course over here Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.